Which brings us to our camaraderie question of the week. You know, we do the camaraderie question of the week because it cuts down on the false assumptions that people make about each other via the fundamental attribution error. Yes, that's right. Bosses build camaraderie on teams by making it easier for people to find things in common with each other. That's why every week we give you a question you can use at meetings or with your teams to facilitate connection and build camaraderie. When you build camaraderie, it is much less likely that that shortcut's going to kick in in your brain that makes you say, that person engaged in that behavior because they're a bad dude. So we build camaraderie for that reason. And our camaraderie question of the week this week is as follows. Alyssa, you can only watch one TV series over and over again for the rest of your life. What is it? Oh, my gosh. This is like, which kid is your favorite to me? Like, I mean, I'm lucky, I guess. I only have you one only kid. have one kid. Like, <laughs> if that were a thing, if I had more than one kid, it would be a problem. <laughs> I like TV is my like escape pod. And so I, I would really struggle with this because I love the funniness on the deep personal characters of like the office, but okay. it's also really cringy to me at some points. Mm-hmm. And so I don't think I could subject myself lifetime to that cringiness. It would, <laughs> it would be too much. And then there's like, okay, a funny show, maybe like, a classic, a classic to me would be like Seinfeld, right? Yeah. But then that doesn't have necessarily the depth I'm looking for. So I think in order to encapsulate all of those things that I'm looking at, and you can say, shut the heck up, but friends. Oh, there's no shut the heck up on that. Okay. I okay. don't think there's a lot of folks who are going to argue that friends doesn't go down in history as one of the great sitcoms of all time. Um, it's an extraordinary cast. It's incredibly well written, incredibly well acted, funny, depth of character. Yeah, I know. I, 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 friends would be, I would think, of one of the least objectionable answers to this question. Well, what would be an objectionable answer right off the top of your head? Like, if somebody, if I had responded with fill in the blank show, you would have been like, you're dead to me. Uh, the Real Housewives of Blank. <laughs> <laughs> I, any I kardashian do. series and i don't judge like like you know if that's boss heroes listening if that's your thing i i do not judge i know hey. that for me <laughs> when i watch those shows it makes me lose faith in humankind <laughs> and that's very that's very judgy of the people on the shows and i will acknowledge that but i i have a friend who years ago made me think of this in a different way she said i watch those shows because they make me feel better about myself <laughs> And that is exactly okay. what I was going to say. I get it. That is exactly what I was going to say. Okay. So now the, your real answer to the question of you can only watch one TV series over and over again for the rest of your life. What is it, Joe? It's the West Wing. The greatest television <sighs> show knew, ever made. I, knew, I should have guessed that. I should have done that. That is my all-time favorite show. For me, there's The West Wing and there's everything else. Uh, it, sit, it sits above. I don't watch a lot of TV. I'm not a big TV watcher. I'd rather watch a, a movie um, you know, or the news or sports. Um, so I don't have a lot of shows that are you know, long-term appointment viewing. I've, I have a couple, but um, I have watched the complete West Wing series probably 15 times. I mean, it's like for years when I started my business, I would put an episode on while I ate lunch and I've just moved through it over and over again. It is brilliantly written, brilliantly acted. It's charming. It's funny. Um, it, it has, it is one of the most awarded television shows in the history of television shows. Um, it is one of the most quotable shows. Um, it, it's, it's a beautiful piece of art. Um, mm. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that, Part of the inspiration for me starting this podcast was the podcast called The West Wing Weekly, which has two folks from the show who are involved in the show who each each podcast episode, they recap an episode and they kind of dive deep. And and I I don't ironically, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, Um, which is, again, polar opposite of me. Yeah. And uh, but I, you know, during exercise and whatnot would kind of get lost in their um 
unpacking of all the different West Wing episodes and just loved their loved how smart the show is and loved how funny it is and and kind of made me think this would be fun to do it in, in, in terms of the podcast in, in terms of a medium to explore interesting topics and and so here we are so for me I I West love Wing. it I <laughs> I think it's hilarious because I have this wide breadth of of podcasts that I really enjoy and I find absolute gold and and that's my one of my consumptions of learning it um is podcasts every day and so when you came to me with this oh you know maybe you should listen to this and i was kind of like okay i listened to it and i was like a podcast about a tv show that's uh -huh. done okay now mind you i did love the west wing but again when you commit to something, Joe, you commit like a thousand and ten percent. So I get your super fandom is is a little out of my reach. I still find the value in the show. Yes. And I'm eternally grateful that you were inspired by it. to Make this podcast, which I get to be a part of. We so. just tied a direct line from the West Wing to Sherm. And Brene Brown, like we ended up on the list because of going way back because there was a West Wing TV show, which led to a podcast, which led to us being here and so on and so forth. And that, folks, is the camaraderie question of the week. <laughs> 